So hello and welcome. My name is Carl and this is Just The Way It Is. And today we're starting a new series. Today we're looking at the BMW R1250 GS. But I, I just need to give you a bit of an update for my regular viewers and subscribers. Don't worry, the Multistrada series will continue. That's where I started and that's my own bike. Um, but back in October, which you'll see from the last video when I reviewed the Roadster, I approached BMW and said, can I try some more bikes with that amazing 1250 motor? And I wasn't really sure what I would get. And I was super surprised when I went to pick this up. I was expecting a six months old um, GS. I was expecting probably a black one because the triple black is the most popular bike by a country mile here in Germany. Um, I was expecting it not to have an awful lot of packs on it because in the UK you get two or three versions and the TE is the, probably the one to have. But here in Germany you have to spec up your bike. So there's lots of options to tick in the list. So I wasn't sure what I was going to get. Um, and the dealer that gave me this bike um, is the same guy that provided me with the last Roadster back in October. Uh, and he knows I had a lot of problems with the seat and I couldn't make it comfortable and I was a pain in the butt. I asked for lots of different seats. He had to order them in for me to try and ultimately I didn't buy the bike. Um, so I was presently surprised when I picked this up for several reasons. One, he already knew and remembered what I was like with seats and he had the comfort, the optional extra comfort seats, the rider and the pillion installed on the bike. Um, not only that, it was a brand new one with zero, yes, zero kilometers on it. Um, and it was this quite nice color, which is the, the rally style. Um, this is not the adventure, which is a, a completely different bike really, although they look fairly similar, it is a different bike. Um, and I was really quite surprised and very pleased. But with zero kilometers on it, that presented a question. What do I do? How do I treat the bike the moment I drove out of the showroom? Um, and so what I decided to do, because I've got the bike for several weeks, I've already had three weeks with it, uh, and I've got several more weeks to go, four or five, before it has to go back. So I wasn't sure how to treat it. And what I decided to do, as an, as an engineer, a mechanic, a technician, I have something called mechanical sympathy. And I thought, well, the, the, the proper thing to do is to run it in properly. Follow the BMW guideline, guidelines, stick to the 5,000 RPM maximum, uh, not take the bike on any dual carriageways, motorways, or here in Germany, the autoband for um, distance testing, uh, because you're not meant to keep the engine at set RPM for any length of time. So my first three weeks have been keeping that RPM down and making sure that I use the rev range all the way through and don't stick at any set um, RPM. So what do I think? Well, the, the first thing I need to say is an apology. I always thought, and just bear with me, I always thought that the GS was for older riders. I thought this is the sort of bike you buy when you're at the end of your motorcycling career, you're getting older and you've decided enough is enough, it might be your last bike, the last five or 10 years of your riding career, and this is the sort of bike you would buy. And back in 2018, if you go back to my Multistrada series, I'll put a link up, um, you'll know that when I was testing bikes in 2018, the GS was not on my list. I always associated, associated this bike with a completely different category of rider and, and wasn't for me. And the only reason I've ended up with this bike, because I was so impressed with that R1250R, the Roadster in the last episode, Episode, I thought I really ought to try it and just see what all the fuss is about. Are they really as good as everybody says? Or is it just marketing and hype? And I have to say, as I've just said, I need to apologize because I've been really surprised, quite shocked how good this bike is. Um, so where to start? It's gonna be a series. I've done the first three weeks. I've had to be gentle with it. Um, I'm up to 760 kilometers, so I've got another couple of hundred kilometers to go. Then it needs to go back and it'll have the first service, which I think from memory is an oil and filter change and an axle oil change. And once that's done, then I can use the full RPM range. Um, so what do I think so far? Well, the very first day that I, that I rode it, which was three weeks ago, the temperature was three degrees. It was jolly cold. Uh, and then I found out uh, what are some of the options that were fitted to this bike. Not only is, is it as you see, but it's got an awful lot of options ticked on that checklist. Uh, and one of the things is the heated seat. The passenger, sorry, the passenger, the rider, 
and the heated grips. Now on your normal BMWs, for example the Roadster that I had, um, the heated grips have two settings, one and two. The first, set and first setting uh, is sort of lukewarm. It's for when you're riding in the summer, in the evenings, it's getting a bit cooler, you've got your summer gloves on, and it's just enough to keep your hands from being cold. Um, the second setting is really hot. Your hands almost melt. It, it's incredibly hot, too hot for, to, for use. I tried using it with winter gloves and still I found it too hot. So. I was really positively surprised by this one. Uh, if you opt for the heated seat option, um, what you end up with is five settings for the heated grips and five settings for the heated seat, for the rider seat, and you have two settings for the, for the pillion seat. And at three degrees, with wind chill, that was probably minus three or four degrees, it was jolly cold, so I was very grateful and very impressed with the uh, adjustability of the heated grips and the heated seat. Now, the heated seat, I've never thought about having a motorbike with a heated seat. Never thought about it. I've never, like many of you, ridden a motorbike and thought, oh, what I need is a heated seat. But having now experienced it, I'm probably not going to buy a motorbike again without a heated seat. It really is a transformation. Even if you have it on setting number one, it just put a, puts a bit of warmth in that seat. And so in the evenings and those early mornings, it makes your riding experience a lot more pleasure, pleasurable. So I've actually really enjoyed that. was the very first thing I noticed and thought, okay, that's pretty good. The brakes. The brakes are lovely. I wasn't expecting an awful lot, but they're brilliant. Even with the haze calipers, they're pretty good. So the question is, what's the difference between ABS and ABS Pro, which comes standard on all the new GSs? So for example, on my Multistrada, uh, that has ABS, but it doesn't have cornering or ABS Pro. Uh, and so if you're barreling into a corner and you realize it's a double apex, or it's a constantly reducing radius, and you've gone in too hot, when you start to scrub off speed with that front brake, the bike stands up, it tries to stand itself up, uh, and the, the outcome is you drift further towards the outside of the corner, which is not a nice place to be. But with the ABS Pro, I have I've not been brave, I'll be honest, I've not been brave enough to grab a full handful of front brake, but I've been slowly, in my three weeks, as I've got used to the bike and the tires and how it feels and how it handles, grabbing more and more brake on deserted roads where there's nobody watching, uh, to see what happens. And it's quite amazing. The bike does not stand up and drift to the outside of the corner. It keeps its line pretty much as you intended. And it's an amazing bit of kit. Now I mentioned a moment ago, the dealer I collected this bike from already knew that I had a problem with getting comfortable on, on the, the Roadster, which I tried last time, which is in the last episode. Uh, and so what he kindly did was fitted these comfort seats. Now. I have not thought about discomfort or being uncomfortable once in the three weeks I've been riding this and the 700 and something kilometers I've done so far, not once. They're a lovely place to be. Uh, my wife's very happy with the pillion seat. It's super soft, super comfortable. And with that heated seat option, you've got two options on the switch on the side, one, two, and a center position for off. It's a nice place to be. Um, seat height, um, seat height's interesting. It's 850 in its lowest setting, and you can come up 20 mil to 870. I'd actually like another option in the middle there. My Multistrada sits at about 860 with my Touratech seat, um, and I would like to come up a little bit more. I've tried it in the higher position in the 870, and I'm not on the balls of my feet, but my feet are not quite flat enough on the ground. And it is quite a heavy bike. You're talking 249 kilos. Um, my Multistrada by comparison, I think if I remember this correctly, is 228 kilos. Um, so there's about 20 kilos of, of weight difference. But once you get going with those cylinders down low, the weight just disappears. It is really easy to manoeuvre low speed. I mean, literally five or six kilometres an hour in traffic, moving around a car park. This is much easier to control and to navigate than my Multistrada. So today really was just an introduction to let you know what I've currently got on test, 
Um, I'm having a little bit of a break from my own bike, which is the Multistrada series. Um, I've already put 10 or 11 episodes up and I needed to do something different and I got the chance to have this. I couldn't say no. Having had the road test of the Roadster uh, back in October, when I was told I could have one of these, I thought, I've got to try it. I've got to see what it's like. Um, and for me, uh, an afternoon road test is not enough. Even a weekend road test doesn't really tell you what a bike's like. Um, it gives you a good idea and you're probably able to make a purchase decision after a long weekend. Um, but to tell you what the bike's really like to live with, I needed the bike for a longer period of time and I'm jolly lucky to have this for eight weeks. So um, there's gonna be more episodes to come. Um, I need to tell you about the tires, the handling, the suspension settings. Um, you've got height adjustment with the suspension and there's a lot more to come. So thank you very much. My name is Carl and you've been watching Just The Way It Is and I'll see you very soon.